morning, everyone. Morning, morning. It is, uh, what is it, Monday, March 25th. Hope you're all doing well. Um, and uh, the equity market continues to sustain some of a bit. Now, we'll talk about uh, how, what we could see for this week. But first and foremost, I want to mention that this Friday is Good Friday, so markets are going to be closed. I think the futures market closed at 1 p.m. or something, uh, Eastern time. So it's going to be a short week, right? Uh, Monday through Thursday is going to just be general, regular trading. And then after we drop off from there on Friday, no trading on Friday. And then we get back at it on Monday, Easter Monday, which is kind of weird. Um, I don't know how active realistically the market's going to be on Monday, but we'll, we'll keep tabs on that. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the news that transpired over the weekend um, and some of the general news as markets have temporarily right kind of curved a little a little over and are pulling down a, a bit but we'll see how, how far that goes um because china has adopted guidelines to halt the use of u.s made microprocessors from intel and amd uh, in government servers and personal computers so the guidance also seeks to replace microsoft windows and foreign made database software with domestic alternatives although investing group leader um daniel serrata doesn't really see that as a real threat and i think this is more of a political case rather than a business standpoint and i think that um this immediate news probably doesn't have a long-lasting negative impact on AMD uh, because AMD shares if we take a gander at them they are down here pre-market right as expected based on the news we're down a few a few bucks from the Friday uh, from the Friday close right nothing crazy about it realistically um, and Beijing has been working to replace foreign technology and sensitive operations with local brands, uh, with Chinese government officials ordered to stop bringing iPhones and other foreign devices to work. Meanwhile, the U.S. has been restricting sales of advanced semiconductors and related equipment to China over national, fear, uh, national security fears. I think like this isn't like a crazy gap down realistically um, from that close. It's about 4%, right, on a high beta asset. That's fairly standard, I guess, from this news. And I think that uh, there's going to be an opportunity this week to see this thing swing back up. Honestly, I think that this news gets bought up. I don't think it's super, super material as of yet. Uh, and uh, I, if we, if we trade into the high 160s, that'd be great. Into that 170 area, that looks pretty promising for AMD. Um, some of the other news around ETFs and funds all in all, uh, as exchange traded funds continue to grow rapidly, rapidly in popularity, right? You've got your classic SPY and triple Qs. You've got their counterparts like from Vanguard, VOOs, uh, so on and so forth. There's an as asset managers are, in are increasingly converting mutual funds to ETFs to adapt to client demands. Uh, there have been more than 70 mutual fund to ETF conversions in the U.S., and asset managers expect this number to rise over the next year. Uh, PIMCO recently proposed its first mutual fund to ETF conversion of its $141 million mortgage-backed security fund, joining other asset managers, including Fidelity, J.P. Morgan, and BlackRock. So, to note, PIMCO's mutual fund uh, offering saw 1. or sorry, $2.1 billion inflow. Uh, for the year ended January 31st, while the ETF recorded uh, $3.9 billion in inflows. While mutual funds have been favored, um, historically investors are now increasingly opting for rival products that offer lower fees and tax advantages. Growing interest in active strategies since 2021 and regulatory latitude granted to reorganize a financial, the reorganization of financial products into ETFs since 2019 have spurred increasing mutual funds to ETF conversions, right? Said Peter Shea, the co, uh, co-head of ETF practice at law firm K&L Gates. However, while ETFs may be traded at prices less than their net asset value, mutual funds always trade at net asset value without any bid and ask spread. A lot of this is the drop off and needing for management fees when you can pretty much just continuously buy ETFs with a low management fee uh, and just dollar cost average into it right you take something like uh, voo which is i think a third if not less of the management fee of the spy for example and it's just it replicates how the spy moves realistically so this is one of the alternatives u.s mutual funds saw net outflows outflows of more than one trillion dollars from january 2021 to december 2023 
in a world where you have uh, zero commission stock trading and can exposure to diversified, ba diversified basket of stocks through direct indexes, it's hard to say that the mutual fund is an efficient vehicle anymore, right? Lisa Chalet at uh, the chief investment officer at Morgan Stanley Wealth Management said. So is are ETFs a general better investment? It's something that you can just kind of dollar cost average in without having to go through and weave through all of this uh, potential more active management, if you will. Um, we can take a look at the government shutdown, right? And it's a version. U.S. President Joe Biden on Saturday signed into law a $1.2 trillion government funding package, um, averting the partial shutdown and ending months of <clears throat> wrangling between Republicans and Democrats. Biden's action came after Senate earlier passed uh, the legislation by a vote of 74 to 24, and the final passage came after the midnight, de midnight deadline, meaning some federal funding technically expired briefly. But the Senate's actions mean that the federal government is now funded through the end of the fiscal year, and this agreement represents a compromise, which means neither side got everything that they wanted, said Biden, but it rejects extreme cuts from the House Republicans. So... We have a decent bit of news, which is pretty interesting this Friday. We actually have the PCE that comes out pre-market as well as Fed Chair Powell speaks on Friday while the markets are attentively closed. Um, today we have Fed Bostic that should be coming on the wire fairly soon. We got the Chicago Fed National Activity Index. We got new home sales, Fed's Cook. The dual mandate and balance of risks is going to talk uh, later in the day. Dallas Fed Manufacturing Survey. And then we have a two-year two note auction results of the $66 billion dollars. Um, in terms of this week, like I said, it's going to be a shorter week, so I'm not expecting that much crazy movement. I think that these dips that are kind of manifesting here over the last few days and pre-market do get absorbed to the upside because, again, we're closing out the month of March. We're closing out the first quarter of 2024. Generally speaking, there's some nice upside in that momentum move. Now, if you guys take a look at my the, the newsletter that I had sent out today, actually pre-market, uh, there is the prognosis that we're in a very, very bullish market that could see continuous upside momentum. So go and check out what that what I kind of break down from there. But um, we're in a remember, we're in a re-election year. We're in election year where technically markets bottom in and around the end of that first quarter. So there could be some continuation to the upside uh, without so much as seeing a five to 10 percent drop um, as we continuously rally. So at first I was looking for something of that nature, but now um, as prices converge and move, uh, seeing 5% drops in prices are most likely going to be dip paying opportunities. Uh, there's one more window of weakness that could suggest that there could be a deeper pullback in the month of May, June, but I don't really see too much coming from that. Now, when we talk about the S&P 500 futures here, uh, we've been slowly curling lower over the past few sessions, and you can see there's heaviness of volume into the highs of most of these sessions. We're now coming into an area where on the Fed day, right last Wednesday, there was a very strong anticipated move that got triggered by traders getting trapped into this low 5270 on the S&P 500 futures, which propelled a 50 point rally to the upside. So it's suggestive that around this area, around 5270, plus or minus a few points, uh, there is suggestive attempted bid to try and sustain this higher. Uh, but I think the real dip buying opportunity becomes into the prior highs that were broken where all this volume kind of gets cleaned up at 52.45. So that's an area I'll be watching to see potential bounces. Right now we're currently in a bearish uh, bearish move to start the, the week here. That could clean up a little auction, maybe a bit more to the downside, 15, 20 points to the downside before we can see uh, some more of those buyers step in. But um, I think these dips are temporary. I think that, yeah, okay, we're currently in some kind of structure that I'd like to be selling the rip. But until we start opening and closing below that 52.45, honestly, it's gonna be very hard to be a medium term bear and just looking for these things to get picked up on the buy side. So that's all I've got for today. Um, this wraps up the start of the week and we'll take a look. I'm fairly interested in seeing Tesla and AMD hold some kind of support in the areas that we're trading right now. Tesla, I believe, is about like, I don't know, just shy of like 170. Into the mid 160s, I think Tesla has some potential bottoming. Uh, AMD around 170, I'm going to be watching that um, to see if we can actually sustain some kind of a bid uh, off this news. And from there, hope everyone had a great weekend, has a great start to the week. It is Monday. Uh, we'll be chugging along. Let's open up our live trading room and... What else? Short week.
that's about it. So I'll see you.